years old, I had a red skirt and I got ink on it, India ink. And India ink does not come out of clothes. So my mother uh, didn't make a big deal about it. Uh, she took something, I don't sew, but she took something, it's kind of called racking, I think. And she wrote my name over the black India ink. So she took something that was ruined and she made it into something quite beautiful. And uh, I call that cultivating the emergent. And I feel that my work is about that, is looking for what is emerging out of the work and cultivating it. And so I don't come to the work with a preconceived idea. I don't know what it's going to look like. Even though I, I use collage elements, I don't consider myself a collage artist. I consider myself a mixed media artist because I don't just use printed material and the work isn't normally flat. My work deals with the intersection of memory, identity, and I love the way time alters materials. I often embed narratives in my work. In the 90s, I worked with tar, uh, lap cement, which coagulated. Uh, I like to incorporate chance. I always say that chance and randomness are my unpaid studio assistants. And I also often incorporate accidents into my work because once you acknowledge an accident, then it's no longer an accident, it's intentional. And part of actually my work has to do with the fact that I lived in an apartment, we didn't have an attic, we didn't have a basement, my mother threw everything out. And we had no documents of our history at all. And it was a different world. So I had one set of grandparents, but I realized they were, they did speak English, but we never had a conversation with them. We never said, what was it like in Russia? You know, how was it growing up? How old were you when you came here? We never thought to ask them those questions. We never had those conversations. And I never thought about it until I went to Berkeley. And I remember I met somebody who for some reason uh, had a family Bible, like an old family Bible, and he opened it up and he showed me it had all the births and deaths of his ancestors. And I thought that was fabulous. And I, I felt like, wow, I don't have that. We don't have that. And so in a way, I feel like I've been looking for my ancestors in thrift stores ever since and finding other people's materials. And I've been a repository for those kinds of materials. Once people realize that I like that, that I have a use for it, a lot of people have materials that they, they don't want to trash, they don't want to throw away, but they're not museum quality and they can't leave it to anybody. So I become the inheritor of this material. And I came up with the concept of saving remnants because in a sense I'm saving remnants with these bits and pieces of letters and photographs and, and pins and all kinds of things that people say that are meaningful to them. And yet also Saving Remnants was a religious group. It has a biblical implication as well. I have a penchant for paper and a penchant for fragments. And I thought about why do I like fragments so much? And then I thought I grew up in New York and one of the places we used to go was the Metropolitan. And we used to go to the Egyptian section, which was fabulous, it had like a temple. But I think the thing that I noticed most is they would have this little tiny fragment and it would be on a pin and then they would build the whole story. They would show you what that wall looked like, even though they had something that was maybe the size of a political button and they would construct a whole story because of their research. I was at a party and an actor asked me what I did and I explained that my work had to do with memory and that I used found materials, documents, and photographs that didn't belong to me and that I worked them into my mixed media pieces. And his face lit up while well, he said, would you be interested in tintypes? I was like, yes, I would. And he said, well, my neighbor passed away and he gave me all these boxes and I don't know what to do with them. He sent a friend over and these boxes kept on arriving. And I opened it up and I thought, 
wow, you know, there are all these letters. Somebody in their family was a marvelous archivist because a lot of times I use these materials and it's almost as if my unconscious or subconscious picks the materials. So I, I'm, I don't really, I, I know they're old, but I'm not really thinking about that particular date. And with the book that I just did, I started looking up the dates that were in the material I was using. And I found that it was amazing to see what happened on the day of the date, like what happened on August 3rd, 1891. And then you look it up and you'll see it's wars and blizzards. And it just seems like it's yesterday. It's the same kind of things that we're having now, except we're not having blizzards, we're having floods and we're having wildfires. But you know, it's the same catastrophes. The, uh, there's 1893, there was a, a recession, a depression, which I didn't remember. And so it's connected me to my past. So I feel that my work collapses time and collapses history. That history is really cyclical and you know, everything that's happened kind of, you feel like it's happened before and it'll happen again. And um, I feel like my studio is some kind of mysterious space, even though, you know, it sounds very California woo woo. I feel like when I close the door, things arrange themselves differently, like Toy Story, you know, documents and letters that want to be in a piece pop up out of a pile. I once had an artist come to my studio who looked around, he was a painter and he looked around and he went, Oh, I see. The meaning in your work comes from the materials. And for me, that was a revelation. That was about 20 years ago, but I thought that's true. And so I don't really have problems starting because I can just go to any surface in my studio and there's a piece that needs to be worked on. I think I have a profound connection with materials. And for me, they have, there are embedded narratives in those materials. And so a lot of times the actual pieces I'm creating are what I like to call archaeology of the soul. 